Martin, uh, for Dr. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. It's me, Abhishek, from uh, Nepal, uh, GWK Institute. So I'd like to welcome our uh, speaker and participants uh, who are joining us today from uh, different uh, part of the world. So on behalf of uh, the organizers, I'd like to welcome you uh, to today's session that we are organizing in uh, Resilience Talk. Uh, the title of uh, today's program is Stories from Ground and Communities Suffering from Loss and Damage in Mountain and Lowlands of uh, Global South. As uh, most of you are uh, familiar and have uh, read and also felt the impact of uh, loss and damage. Uh, loss and damage is the critical issue for many communities and people uh, in, in the global south. So it's very important for us to have the discussion on loss and damage as uh, the COP28 uh, will make sure that uh, the finance for loss and damage uh, is up there. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, ICAC for uh, providing this uh, opportunity for us uh, to organize uh, this event. And also i like to remember the people and communities who have uh, lost their life and livelihood in last uh, few years of, uh, because of uh, loss and damage. And now I'd like to go and share about the module uh, of the program. So we have uh, speakers uh, and uh, the community uh, who have the suffering from uh, loss and damage who will share their story. So we'll start with uh, Gita Ji, uh, who, uh, who, uh, uh, like, uh, who is the Director of uh, Advocacy and Policy and Research at CIDAC. She will be sharing the stories of loss and damage in mountain uh, region of Nepal and after her We'll have the community voices from uh, from uh, the mountain region of uh, Nepal that uh, in Talikot, one of the very uh, impoverished uh, uh, part of uh, Nepal. So uh, Surja Bom will be sharing her struggles, how the communities are uh, facing the burnt of uh, loss and damage. And then we'll uh, go to the lowlands of uh, Nepal where uh, Lalan Prasad Rao, who is the chairperson of uh, Tilachi Koilachi uh, Rural Municipality, part number five, he will be sharing uh, the impact of uh, climate induced loss and damage flood uh, two years back uh, in Saptari, and uh, Prayas Radhikari, who works as a uh, senior program officer at Jigobitas uh, Institute, will share the research finding and uh, engagement uh, in the modest uh, province of Nepal. And uh, we also have a privilege today uh, to have uh, Wanun, uh, who, who is the director of uh, Climate Watch Island. She will be sharing the stories and the suffering of communities in the lowlands of uh, Island uh, from loss and damage. So I'd like to again uh, welcome you all uh, to, to the program who have joined from Nepal, uh, Bangladesh, I see people from USA and other parts of the world uh, who are joining us uh, today. Uh, so now I'd like to uh, hand over to Gitaji to share uh, the research findings that uh, KIDAC uh, recently conducted in uh, Calicut. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Abhishek Ji. Good morning, all. Namaste. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'll be sharing, uh, as shared by Abhishek Ji, I'll be sharing the findings of the uh, study conducted on the uh, Karnali province of Nepal, just a few minutes. Uh, I'll... Uh, can you see my slide? Yeah, yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll be presenting uh, the study which was conducted in the Karnali province, uh, one of the mountain region of Nepal. Uh, as we all know that uh, Nepal is highly vulnerable to climate change and its impact are evidenced all across the sector and all across the country. And loss and damage resulting from climate change are visible throughout the country. We all know that. And the both uh, slow onset events uh, such as droughts and the glacier melting in the higher Himalayas and the rapid onset events like floods, fires, and landslides are increasing in the frequency as well as in the intensity in the last few years, which we all are experiencing 
Uh, likewise, these uh, climate-induced disasters have led to the significant loss of life and extensive damage in Nepal, not only in Nepal, as Abhisekji uh, quoted earlier, uh, in the, you know, like the South Asian regions and also in the uh, coastal areas as well. And this study uh, in the Karnali province, the mountain region of Nepal, could be one of the case stories of the uh, climate-induced loss and damage in the mountainous region of Nepal. And basically, the, ma uh, the major objective of the study was to assess the significant impacts resulting from the climate-induced uh, <clears throat> loss and damage. slide is not moving okay and the study area as i mentioned it is the uh, one of the uh, remote part of the nepal in the karnali province the palata and it is uh, from 800 meter to 4000 meter height from the sea level which is uh, one of the mountain region and you know the area where we conducted this study is one of the remotest and the uh, most you know marginalized section of the province itself uh, we need to take a 12 hours rock road drive and uh, the reason is yet to be connected with the road highway and the region uh, where the study was conducted uh, have very limited health education and the electricity facilities and the basic facilities as well and uh, majority of the population that is more than 86 percent of the populations are engaged in agriculture and as per the different vulnerability assessment reports uh, the region is most vulnerable and is vulnerable to landslide droughts and floods as well uh, this is the brief of the uh, framework of our study and talking about the methods uh, we conducted the DEX study and the literature review we have uh, various review meetings <coughs> as well and the criteria for the selection of the sample households basically we selected the household whose family lost both house and the agricultural land in the last year landslides were given as the first priority and the family who lost their house but not the agricultural land were taken as the second priority and family <coughs> who lost uh, agricultural land but not the house uh, so basically these were the three criteria for uh, selecting the sample households and talking about the sample size uh, the study team received 278 households which was completely damaged by uh, the rainfall last year uh, which was occurred from 5 to 10 October 2022 uh, and as per the span the sample households were 79 using the uh, sample calculation tool and uh, sample size and confidence level were 10 to 95 uh, percent respectively. And uh, we conducted orientation to the illuminators and the pretest of the household questionnaire survey. And we also conducted the stakeholder consultation meetings to identify the hot, stop, hot, hot spots uh, that were uh, damaged by the landslide. And also the uh, field observation and interaction with the affected uh, family were also conducted. And talking about the uh, primary sources of the information, household survey, uh, that is basically for the quantity information and we conducted focus group discussions and the key informant interviews uh, as a part of the qualitative information. Uh, so talking about the intensity and frequency of the disasters, uh, the study revealed that the heavy uh, or no rainfall uh, was occurred as the uh, highest frequency followed by drought uh, in the last 10 years. Uh, similarly, the intensity of heavy or no rainfall was also, you know, like uh, observed uh, in the last uh, 10 years. Uh, so talking about the negative impacts of the ch uh, changing weather patterns, the below table had illustrated, you can see in the table that uh, 31 respondents remarked that where house and agricultural land were lost due, due to the landslide and the flood uh, frequently occurred due to the erratic weather and also decrease in the agricultural production as well as damage to agricultural land was the major. Uh, likewise, the mental stress and the increase in disease and pest uh, were also uh, responded by a few of the respondents. Uh, so uh, from the various sources and the field observation uh, and through the hotspot identification, it was identified that the 67% of the respondent mentioned that the weather condition has been worsened since the last 10 years. And 75% uh, of the respondents revealed that the uh, worsening weather conditions have negative impact on the agriculture production, as I mentioned, in the location where we conducted this study, around 86% population depend on the agriculture 
likewise uh, talking about the uh, major climate induced disaster landslide was the major followed by the drought um, and forest fire as well uh, so talking about the impact on the agricultural production, majority of the response responded repeated that the erratic rainfall or the no rainfall, too much and too little water was the major problem of the area. Uh, like uh, like was the community where you know uh, adapting some of the coping strategies during the time of the disasters. Uh, talking about the landslide, majority uh, you know uh, took uh, migration as one of the major coping strategies. You know followed by the uh, other reconstruction and support from the community. Uh, likewise, if we talk about the flood, uh, migration outside the district was the major coping strategy, similarly like the landslide. And also uh, support from the community was one of the coping strategies as the community cohesion and the sociocultural norms and values are associated with this as well. Uh, so talking about the drought, it is also the majority of the uh, respondents, uh, basically the coping strategy was migration outside the district. So the migration trend is uh, basically taken as the one of the major coping strategy uh, throughout the different climate events. Uh, so when you talk them about uh, what are your uh, hindrances on the coping strategy, lack of fund was the uh, uh, major, you know, like the response from them. Lack of funds and the lack of interest was the uh, followed by lack of uh, interest and the difficult geographic terrain were the hindrances on the coping strategies. Uh, you know, like the residents, they have been doing some of the adaptive measures to minimize the loss and damage from the landslide and floods, uh, like they are doing some of the uh, measures as bamboo plantation, grass plantation, and the bioengineering, among others, <clears throat> for one of the adaptive measures. So when we talk about loss and damage, basically we used to talk about the economic and the non-economic losses. So through this study, it was identified that about 65 million rupees, while we calculate the economic value of the loss and damage uh, in the Palika, like uh, about 65 million rupees was lost uh, on the October 2022, you know, uh, the climate induced disaster. But uh, surprisingly, this amount is such a big amount because the total annual budget of the Palika it's around 47 million this is in nepali rupees but the loss it was 65 million so there was like you know 17 million annual budget gap only due to this disaster but this 65 uh, 47 million budget is the current and the development budget of the palika however uh, 65 million was lost due to this uh, 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 climate induced disaster so you know like there is a huge gap and we need to think about this and there is no specific budget for the loss and damage in the municipal and also one interesting fact uh, it was identified during this study was each households have economic loss about 800,000 Nepali rupees, which means, you, you know, like around like 10,000 Nepali rupees, uh, which is uh, like per, uh, uh, this one is in dollar 10,000, which is the per person per year income. So uh, the facts reveals that uh, there is a huge gap and the loss, the economic loss is quite high. Uh, so basically, while we calculate uh, calculate or compare the economic uh, losses, uh, it was highest uh, in landslides, uh, followed by flood and drought in the areas. <clears throat> Uh, so talking about the non-economic losses, you know, the market price uh, of the daily com uh, commodity is this rise, as well as the situation of the food insecurity it is more prevalent in the region, as well as threat to the local biodiversity and the uh, preservation of the indigenous rice varieties, we call it rato samal, which is the red rice, which is the local indigenous variety in the region. And uh, the basically the impact on the women, uh, we can see that 90% of the women are directly affected by the last year disaster where we conducted the study during the September, October 2022, uh, the landslide. And uh, basically the male migration rate is very high. As we see, most of their coping strategy is, you know, like moving outside the district for in sake of the other livelihood opportunities. And the poor access to economic opportunities and the empowerment of the women, uh, basically it hardly hit the women and also the causes of the degrading mental health during and after the disaster it was seen uh, more frequently. Uh, so few of the recommendations from our study basically we need to strengthen the local government and lead the role uh, on the response of the disasters likewise we need to allocate the budget 
for the you know specific budget for uh, addressing these uh, climate induced loss and damage and establishment of the fund for loss and damage at the local level uh, likewise we also uh, during the consultations and the group discussions uh, we identified that the certain percentage of the development fund fund from the local government and the matching fund from the development partner uh, should be mandatory you know to allocate in the uh, loss to address the loss and damage and provision of non life insurance uh, of crop, livestock, and the human, uh, as well as good governance and transparency and the fund mobilization. This, this is basically to strengthen the local government to cope uh, in these situations. And the major component was capacity development of the youth, trained youth, and the formation of the quick response team led by the youth and in, encourage women to engage on this, and also provision some financial incent in, uh, incentive for the team. Uh, likewise, empowering women, skill training and developing entrepreneurship for youth uh, to reduce the out migration rate as well as training on mental health for coping the strategies mentally and physically. Uh, likewise, relocation and resettlement of the households living at the vulnerable areas. Uh, uh, as well as to make the government more accountable, we need to have formation of the team for the uh, citizen audit led by the youth and public hearing audit power balance between the local government and the citizen, as well as promoting the good governance. Uh, likewise, uh, Bakari, this is the local traditional concept that we are being, you know, like doing in our local communities. Uh, so mountain indigenous practice for storing the surplus grain underground. And, uh, basically, this is the concept said we need to enhance the capacity of the local communities as well as the local uh, stakeholders to work locally and warehouse for storing emergency relief items at the community level. So basically this concept should be like implemented in all the RMs, one Bakari, one uh, ruler municipality. Uh, and likewise, uh, connecting local government to provincial and federal government, there is a huge gap. So basically, we need to pull the provincial and the federal level government bu uh, budgets to address the this climate induced loss and damage. And one of the major important is uh, to update the uh, database, like you know, activate the rural municipality web page to share this information to the local community and the public at the large scale. Uh, likewise, establishment of the early warning system through connecting to the website and the social media so that um, there could be minim minimization of the scale of the loss and damage due to this uh, climate extreme events, uh, as well as make equipped uh, youth respond teams with the smartphones and with GPS facilities in this, you know, like the world of the technology. Uh, so at the international level, uh, through this study, we identified that Nepal needs to do informed advocacy in the COP28 uh, to be held in UAE. This is the major point. Likewise, to raise the voice on the issues of loss and damage in the International Climate Change Forum and discourse and negotiate for the rational compensation. So what the community is uh, facing due to this uh, loss and damage and strengthen alliance and network of the vulnerable countries to deal with the loss and damage. So these are the few recommendations uh, from our side, uh, which was like uh, from our story. Uh, so these are the few photographs. Uh, Okay, thank you. Thank you, Abhisekji, over to you. Uh, so I think we will take uh, questions after we finish all the presentations. And if you have some uh, feedbacks and the questions, you can put it in the chat so we can like uh, respond to them in the chat as well. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Gita Ji. Uh, thank you, Gita Ji, for uh, the sharing the research uh, work uh, that CDAC uh, conducted in Calicut in support of uh, its uh, partner organization. As uh, Gita Ji highlighted that uh, the intensity and uh, frequency of uh, disasters like uh, land, uh, landslide uh, drought has been uh, increasing in uh, the mountain regions of Nepal. And also she presented uh, the case of one of the rural municipality where uh, the economic losses of loss and damage is higher uh, than the annual uh, budget of uh, the rural municipal. So it's, it's very clear and uh, evident uh, that uh, the loss and damage fund that's in place or as an outcome of uh, COP27 has to be 
operationalize uh, in uh, upcoming top in Dubai. And not only that, uh, the money uh, when it comes or like when it's uh, operationalized, uh, the money needs to be, be deployed uh, the, the, to the people uh, like in like the like the part uh, of uh, Nepal and other parts of the of the world where community have been uh, having that uh, suffering. Indeed, uh, as uh, Gita Ji shared, that there needs to be. Uh, collective aligned uh, building, uh, bringing more stories of uh, struggles to uh, research to community voices so that uh, we can make sure that uh, these uh, global north uh, countries uh, feel that and then uh, we have the operationalization of uh, loss and uh, damage funds. Uh, so I'd like to now uh, go to uh, our uh, community speaker. So as I forget to mention earlier, we have a provision of uh, interpretation uh, Omkar Tubedi from uh, the Rubika uh, Institute uh, will be helping uh, with uh, interpretation uh, facility. So uh, uh, the, our next speaker uh, is uh, Surja Brahm uh, from uh, Calicut. She will be sharing her uh, stories and suffering uh, from loss and damage. And, and like, I'd like to request uh, you to uh, click into the interpretation and to uh, English. Understanding uh, Nepali. So I like to request uh, Surja Bomji and also like to request uh, Padamji from uh, Kedak to facilitate that. Thank you very much. Namaste, all of you. We are from Kalikot, Nepal, and now Surja Bomb is going to tell her, tell her, tell her this story from here. Thank you. Namaskar, my name is Surya Bhamo. Namaskar, my name is Surya Bhamo. Abo. Abo. Palata Gang Palika. Kaliko, Abo. Thirpu. Abo. Kya karne? Chedi bedi dere bo. Abo. Chena kete kete chon bal bacha chon ghar koi ghar koi dalloi ko. Mathi baato poshu mene thausai na. Abo. Sirman unun na. Sarketa <laughs> Oil mapping, oil lipping, oil is one penny palm mason. Dan goes up, play Bali very bog. I love you. A little more tolerable at the corner, Lily, Matian or Balu Boris of you. Kid Bali been long in the town. Um, come out when a cinema no no no. Kigarne. She had no sorrow, does does get a verse ago. Or fifty years on the manuscript. Um, by the other kitty aboy, so it's in Tano 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 Cornalillo, Duita, Polar Cornalim, Duita. Of the Soria Rulaim, Tanalagi, Sob Goyo, Cornalima. Gore Goyo, Cane Balisari, Sob Goyo. Kirne, of Ketati Abu, Ketati Tanalagi, Cornalima, Duita, Tolomati Bata. Mati Bata, Poyron Layo, without a Cornalium Layo, without a Polam Layo. Goyo tan pani goyo mauka pani goyo gong pani sa goyo go ek dui bakra pani goye ghar pani goyo ab yeh ne yeh tau ta yeh ne manchi koi chahi na oilsman pan man borsi achu oil to yeh ta uta korsi ko kam danda gare rakhan chhu ki garne yeh ta dibal bacha pan lay padeyo. I'm 
पहरो आँधे के लिए कौन से कौन से Did you answer to tear a pile of the apology of the और को सब पे बंदा तो समझ जाए लेकिन ती चंचन कुटी लगाई दिया भी अपनी ते ती टेर ने चुव खानू ते ता उता कोई सु काम गंदा कर अपनी खाया चुव ते घर बस ने घर बया अपनी चुव को को
हत्तीर गईली मेरे छोरी पैल अज भी जाने छेन हत्तीर गईली बैने डेरा छेन काम होने लत्ता छेन गईली एटा छोरी को पथ पर रुने खाना पथ पर रुने जे बाट आंसू जड़े जड़े मेरे आ अब बच्चा भैया गोरु बम को बच्चा भैया तीन गए तेरह बोलाए अंत कति हे दुकान डालने अल जान दीजु मैं तीन बाट आयो घर भी गए के करे के करे के टाइम घर भी गए छे मानी छोरी जो आए पलटे पलटे तेल दवाई करने पैसा छे धन्यवाद Tuzazi and uh, many peoples and communities from uh, global south are uh, facing and stand in uh, solidarity uh, with these people and uh, community. For them, uh, this climate crisis is uh, means uh, life and uh, like a death for them. So again, I like to reiterate uh, as earlier that uh, the operationalize of loss and damage is uh, very critical uh, in this COP. And these resources has to reach uh, to people like uh, Surja. Hey, what are you doing, sir? Major. Major, sir. Major. Oh, he. Major, sir. The condition, condition, duration, sir. Ah, yes, the major, sir. Sir, man, no boy, co. God, boss, team, no boy, co. Duration, you go, ma, pani. Oh, kya karne? नमस्ते केटा तो मिदा पाऊ के खाना पीना पका गए आईहाल गाँव थैंक यू गीता जी एंड पदम जी फर फिलिंग द्यूमन फेस अफ द क्लाइमेट क्राइसिस लस एंड डैमेज फ्रम द हिमालय सो आई लाइक टू मूव ऑन to uh, the next uh, speaker uh, we have uh, prayas adhikari from uh, digopikas who will be sharing the research finding of uh, digopikas institute that was uh, conducted in saptari district of uh, modest uh, province uh, so i like to request uh, prayas ji to share the findings of research and also i like to inform prayas ji that you will have like 10 minutes for your presentation so, uh, so i like to request prayas ji uh, to take it forward uh thank you abhishek uh, i will share my presentation first okay just a few second I think Prayas is having some internet issue. Yeah, he is back. I think he had some uh, technical issue. 
I think we need to make him an. Uh... No, he is. Uh, yeah, he have had he had access. Uh, I'm extremely sorry for this uh, technical issues. Uh, I'm going to present uh, here my presentation. Okay. So. So can you see the presentation here? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. Uh, little bit of disturbance of this uh, because of this technical issue, but I will start my presentation. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good morning from Nepal. Uh, today, I will, I'm going to present uh, a short uh, presentation on the case study of South Red District, uh, which is more uh, towards loss and damage in lowland region of Nepal. As we all know, the loss and damage has no any boundaries and just Gita in the uh, Kridak seg about the mountain regions. Okay. Uh, so in uh, 2021, October was unusual for the uh, for Nepal, for the farming community of Nepal, because in 2021, uh, Nepal faced a heavy rainfall within a three days of time period, which resulted in the flood uh, of with the heavy loss of ready to harvest uh, rice of worth around 50 million US dollar all over the Nepal in the southern plains. Uh, the pad, if you talk about paddy, it's it's alone it's alone contributes seven percent of national uh, gross domestic product and is the major income source for more than half of the population. Uh, specifically, the in Madhesh province, the Madhesh province was uh, we had to face around um, the total cultivated land of uh, Modus province, 11% of total cultivated land of Modus province was completely destroyed because of this uh, untimely rainfall. Uh, if you move into Sotari district, the studies where the district where we uh, conducted our uh, study on loss and damage, the Sotari district is a part of Modus province whose uh, the main city of economy is agriculture. And uh, specifically, uh, in uh, Modesh province, Saptari was a district which was to had to face around 25% of loss uh, among other districts as well, specifically two major uh, municipalities. One is Tilati Koyadi Rural Municipality, another one is Harmanagar uh, Pankalini uh, Municipality, which uh, were uh, the most affected ones. Uh, if you uh, look into the uh, analysis of loss, uh, that was occurred in 2021 in within various districts of uh, Madhesh province. Of three was the highest to uh, obtain uh, the loss. The October rainfall was very much unusual, as I already mentioned in the background. Uh, and for that, we analyzed uh, the uh, we analyzed the uh, the magnitude of rainfall uh, in the month of October over 30 years. And we found two major incidents, unusual incidents. One was on 2001 and another one was on uh, 2021. But if you compare the 2001 and 2021 rainfall of October, these two incidents were not also similar because in 2001, uh, the, uh, the, the rainfall was occurred for our, around nine days with the intensity of around, the highest intensity of around 130 millimeter in a single day. But in 2021, uh, the rainfall was occurred for a short duration of time, which is three days specifically with the highest intensity of around 273 millimeter, which was the major reason for this much of loss, this devastating loss uh, to be faced by the farming communities in the Southern Plains. If we talk about impacts that was occur uh, because of this rainfall, uh, untimely rainfall in uh, the Southern Plains of Nepal, specifically in Modest province, uh, the rice, the ready to harvest paddy start to re-germinate in the field itself uh, and the farmers were not able to uh, protect them, not able to even collect the, the rice from that field. The house were completely submerged and destroyed because of this rain and the lands were uh, completely destroyed, covered with sand, which was non-restorable for that community. Even the farmers were able to harvest very few amount of rice from their field, the rice were not uh, edible, even for the animals as well. As for the community, the rice were not, were accepted uh, by the animals as well as a feed. 
7,250 tons of rice. If we uh, more talk more specifically into us for uh, for a single municipality that is Hanumanagar Kankaliti uh, municipality in Saptari, 7,250 tons of rice worth of around 1.4 million US dollar was lost. Then we can just uh, imagine how much loss does the uh, uh, the municipalities and the communities, farming communities, has to face in the southern plains of Nepal. Uh, during our course of study, we had a various round of discussions, uh, meetings with uh, communities, and the communities said that uh, with this devastating uh, untimely rainfall uh, impacting uh, this community largely heavily uh, for the agricultural products, uh, the community was also not able to assess the relief, relief fund that was uh, allocated by Nepalese government. And the community were forced to take loans because of this impact, because of the loss of rice, because the community used to uh, grow uh, that uh, uh, paddies in their field, rice and sell them. And with that um, income, they used to run their household throughout the year. But they were now they were uh, forced to take loans even to fulfill their house basic household needs, and the fertile lands were completely destroyed because of this untimely rainfall. The community were unable to repay even the agricultural input cost, which uh, lead them to the vicious cycle of this the poverty, vicious cycle of debt. Uh, during our course of study, uh, we. Uh, during our course of study, we uh, uh, made a video, a short video representing the community, the loss and damage there, uh, the loss of the uh, paddies. Uh, so I would like to share this short documentary here. Uh, hope uh, you can hear this. Okay, here goes the document. Um. कसरी बाबु ने पुरुष जान जोगानु बुलाके सब पे जाना हमें उपान मो यहाँ तक ही जालवा सम। सो ये तो ऑडियो वाज़ नॉट ऑडियो वाला। त्यो बारी को कारण ले कर दा पांच मन जत्ती ने मेरो धान भाई त्यो पनी त्यो वो बालवा माटी लागे को धान पूरा गांव दहारी भागे ले इतने पाइन मरो इतने पाइन भागे ले हमरा सब का कती तो बहुत एक डेढ़ बीघा चले लेकिन धान नहीं बने सब तबे साल भर बितायो आइले चावल पनी किंदे चुं है ना दासुर से लावलिए और धनिक से कि के जेठाज बिराज से जबर लगा के लावलिए तना तना क्या क्या बुझा चल रहा है।
धान रोपने छलिए धान गले दाल गल में बाढ़ गए सब धान खराब भाग गए धान नहीं भागले सब बाढ़ नहा दिल्कि मांग से भेज दिल Uh, so this was a short video that we made uh, during our course of study, and the uh, the community has to face uh, a lot of issues regarding their production, regarding their agriculture, and others. And uh, adding on this, uh, the, the the loss and damage, the untimely rainfall, untimely climatic incidents. Hit them so badly that they even can't uh, uh, regenerate uh, from their level, and the loss and damage for communities are not merely incidents. They often become significant turning points of in their livelihoods. Uh, so, with that quote, uh, I would like to end my presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, for sharing. Uh... The research engagement and uh, the documentary from uh, Saptari, uh, as uh, Prayash uh, shared in his presentation, is that uh, that's very unusual uh, phenomena that happened in November, October uh, 2021. So when uh, the government of uh, Nepal like uh, announced formally that the monsoon is over, but despite that. With a very unusual uh, rainfall pattern that led into heavy loss of uh, the paddy that was already uh, dried uh, in the field. So this is uh, these are like uh, the incident that uh, like exaggerating because of uh, climate change and especially the impact of loss and damage is uh, very uh, visible and that uh, very evident. I think many of us. Uh, many of us or who are from different parts of the world can connect uh, with the stories, uh, with the people and the communities uh, that we have been working uh, with. So uh, I think it's uh, very important for us uh, again to uh, to reach out uh, with these stories to our government and again make these uh, global north countries feel and uh, realize that uh, the climate change is the issue of uh, life and death of people like uh, like it's adding more burden to the people as uh, prayers have uh, shared that it's adding uh, the depth burden to the people so so it's very uh, evident and and I think as Gitaji also mentioned earlier that we need to uh, build an uh, alliance uh, bring these stories uh, from the ground to these international uh, forums and make these uh, global leaders from uh, not to make them here and realize that how much the operationalize of loss and damage is important for the existence of uh, people and their uh, livelihood. So, so without uh, further delay, uh, I'd like to uh, go to our next uh, speaker, uh, who is uh, Mr. Lalan Prasad Rao, who is the ward chair uh, person for ward number uh, five in Kilachi, Koilachi Rural Municipality in Saptari. So I'd like to request uh, Lalan sir to share uh, the stories, uh, the challenges that uh, they had to face the community, uh, how they are living at the present uh, because of the flood uh, incident uh, that was, that happened after the monsoon in 2021. So I'd like to request uh, Lalan uh, sir to uh, share his story. Namaste, Samarulai. I'm Lalan Prasad Rao, Tilati Kulari Gamapalika, and I'm Pats, Saptari, Madhya Pradesh. हजुरहरुले यो यसमा हामीलाई बोल्ने मौका दिनु भएको मा अप्सन दिनु भएको मा मुरी मुरी धन्यवाद हजुरहरु सबैलाई म एउटा आज वडा कोडा अध्यक्ष हु तर जुन बेला 2078 सालमा यो बेमौसम वर्ष कार्तिक 1 गत नसोचेको समयमा त्यत्रो ठूलो वर्ष भयो जसका कारण मो आफै पीडित छु म आफै एक बिगा आलु लगाएको थिए मेरो पाँच बिगा जग्गामा धान थियो र म अलि सक्ने मान्छेले त केही गर्न भ्याए तर यस्तो पनि किसानहरु छन् जसले लिजमा जग्गा लिएर खेतीबारी गरेका थियो मेनली तरकारी खेती पनि लगाएको थियो जस्ट लगाएको खेतीबारी तरकारी बारु रिंग्स लिएर गरेको खेतीबारीमा 
त्यो सब सखा भल यो दुखद कुरा अलग सुर्जा बम दीदी जो रुन भो वहाँ को आंसू जो निस्को तो हेरा रा मैं मेरे आँख मेरे आँखा आंसू निस्को क्यों मो पीड़ित मेरे आसपास के किसान तो पीड़ा ने पीड़ित तो वर्षा के कारण जो अठहत्तर कार्तिक एक दुई रीन गति भीषण वर्षा बेमौसम वर्षा भग किसान लगा धान यो मेहनत कर ऋण काड़े धान खेती लगा क्यों हम एरिया गरीबी एरिया तल्लो तर साइड को एरिया हो कोशी क्षेत्र को एरिया हो तैंतीक पानी जमे होस में यो ठूल आपत जो कल्पना भाग बाहर लगा को बाली लगा को तरकारी खेती सब सखा भो जिस का कारण ये ऋण ली लिख खेती करो तो ऋण अम्म अम्म को असर अम्म पड़ा तो ऋण चुक्ता नगरिकन कति तो मेन्टल स्ट्रेस भाषा कति को उठी बास क्योंकि गरीबी को कारण गरीब एरिया भैय कारण लीज में खेती लिख तो खेती बर्बाद भो ऋण लगे खेती अर्क यो ये बेमौसम बारिश तो वर्षा कसरी क्यों हमीर ठाईन हम था कुन कारण ले यो ग्लोबल वार्मिंग भाई कस भाई गर्मी में अत्यधिक गर्मी हो गर्मी को कारण इस पाली हम विद्यालय नहीं बंद कर पर्ने अवस्था एक हफ्ता दस दिन पंद्रह दिन बढ़ाने बढ़ाऊ पर्यो विद्यालय तेत्रो गर्मी इस पाली को आपको मधेश एरिया को आपको जिला को आपको गांव पालिक को जारो में एक्सी अत्याधिक जारो होस बेला दाउरा बाले बांच बचा पर्च पब्लिक हम बच्च पर्च दाउरा बा जंगल बा दाउरा लाच कि गरीब बचा पर्च कम्बल बांट् पर्च अपुग बजट हो संभव होते हैं गरीब कम्बल बांट बजे होते पैसा होते हैं क्योंकि गरीबी तो सब चाहिए तो अवस्था हो चीसो में फिर वर्षा अब वर्षा भो अर्षा आज न सोचे बेला में वर्षा एक अत्यधिक एक दिन तीन वर्षा हो फिर पंद्रह दिन होते हुए अब यह वर्ष ले पानी को काम लग आयो बाड़ी वर्षा भो बाड़ी आयो बाड़ी सब आलि तोरे बग्यो पानी पानी छेन भोलि खेत रोपने गयो पानी खेत में छेन एक दिन अत्यधिक वर्षा होने फिर पंद्रह दिन बीस दिन महीना दिन होने हुए सुक्खा में लमसम सुक्खा खरहरी नहीं पर्ने भन्ना अब बेमौसम का कारण बेमौसम वर्षा वेदर के हो हमीर खास मत साइंतर हेन तर हे हम जो भोग हमारा पब्लिक जो भोग हमारा किसान जो भोग मैं भनी रहे सर कुरा यहाँ हमीर फिर चुरे क्षेत्र को मानी यहाँ चुरे को कारण हमीर तैं चुरे को दुहन भैर वातावरण तेत्रो खराब हो कि हमीर तेज को मार में डोनेस्टी में बस्ने मान झन खराब हो अर्क हिमाल क्षेत्र सुनी रहो ताल हम तो हेरा छेन अब हम पब्लिकसंग रिटेड मं जनता को काम करने मं बड़ा में बस्ने मं काम करने मं तर हमी ज्ञान होते अब कस हमीर तस्त देखा छेन कत हम अदर कंट्री में के कस्तो तो ऊ हमी हेन पाकोन अल्लेम ज्ञान पड़ी छेन किसान कहीं राहत होस् हम पब्लिक बचा सको सकून कि कहीं जानकारी दिन सकून कहीं होते तब एट कार्यक्रम कर हम ज्ञान लिंक रहा हम पब्लिक में भू इस बचना ये ये पर्च इस नोक्सान ये हो मत भू तो हिमालय क्षेत्र में ताल अब ताल अल हाल सुने मैं नहीं सुने तब सुनभक सिक्किम में के भो अब तेस को असर तो हमीर तल को मैं नहीं पर्च मथि को असर तो तल को मेलमची में ठूल यो बाड़ी आयो तो बेमौसम के कारण थो गत वर्ष को असार गति को कारण थे पूरा थी तेस को असर भी फिर हमीर पड़े हम डन तीर छो पानी हमें तीर आशी तीर आई यथावत कुछ बेमौसम में भग अब तेस को असर के हो सुखा को टाउ टाउ में सुखा को समय में उब्जनी होते खेती होते झन गरीब हो सूर्जा बम जस्तों दीदी लाई तब ये तो प्रतिनिधि पात्र मत्र हो सर यो प्रतिनिधि पात्र मत्र हो यहां सैयो है हजारों हम हम्रे तीर पहाड़ को कुरा तो पहाड़ में बस्ने बुझ्हु मैं हेरे मेरे आँखा बड़ा आँसू झर तो अवस्था पीरा देखे सूर्जा बम दीदी को तो अवस्था हमी तीर सर हमी तीर बेमौसम को यो मौसम को कारण 
नहुने चीसो को बेला में जबकि अब मनसिर पुस्ती रहा हूँ तेज बेला पानी लाम कुटे लाग से तो पहला थी ना मैं काठमांडू 2050 साल में जाता थे यहाँ पंखा पानी थी ना कुने रूम में दिन में पानी कुटा मत चिर दा चीसो लाग से तो ना इले ऐसी चलाने पर नहीं अवस्था से काठमांडू का अवस्था जस्तो से त्यह लाम फुटे थी ना झूल कोते थी ना तो आज अ काठमांडू में दिन ना झूल लगाये रे सुतने उधर ना काठमांडू में बॉडी अस्पाली डेंगी को कुरा सुनी रहा है यो अवस्था से यो मौसम का कारण ले त्यस को निदान के कसौरी करने सकने उनसे ये ये कुरा आरुचन अब क्या भानु एक ऐसे समय में एक ऐठ हम धेरे वर्षा हुन्छ त्यस को कारण नुकसान हुन्छ मेले सब कुरा मोटा मोटी भाव को कुरा हर भाने मेले और त्यस को प्रीकाउंसन क्ये हुना सक्षो कसौरी हुन्छ और यत्रो घटना घटी और हत्तर साल को काती को तो नेपाल सरकार अथवा कुने दात्री संस्थाल एक रुपया पनी किसान ले सहयोग करेगो चाहिए ना कुने किसी को राहत कुने किसी को सही ना प्रेशर ना झेलना ना सके कि कती किसान उधर गई सके उठी बास भी सके कती तो मेंटल स्ट्रेस में के के कर रहा है तो त्यो कारण ले तो त्यो कारण आज हम तेज बिला मो प्रतिनिधि चाहिए ना � नौ मौसम के तित्रों ज्ञान से बस इले ज्ञान पर नहीं दिए कुछ ने कुत्ते ने विजिट करे कुछ कि यो जस बात है उन्हें नुकसानी कुत्ते और छत्ती पड़ती कसरी करने चलाए कसरी मेंटेन करी थी नौ उन्हें उन्हें नौ दिन को लाइक तो सत्तर कसरी उन्हें त्यो पुरा आरु उपनी चेतना है उन्हें पर � धन्यवाद लालन सर थैंक यू लालन सर थैंक यू लालन सर फॉर शेयरिंग द स्टोरी फ्रॉम पिलाती पोलाती रूरल मिनिस्ट्री इन सप्तरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओमकार सुबेदी हैव इंटरप्रेटेड व्हाट सी सर बट आई लाइक टू ब्रीफली अगेन Summarize uh, his uh, sharing. He, he said that the extreme uh, weather uh, events uh, are in, uh, are increasing and in, 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 in impact are uh, being felt uh, both in uh, summer and uh, the winter. He also shared the incident of uh, this year summer where the temperature was extreme and then the schools uh, were uh, closed. And he also said. Uh, that the October 2021 post uh, monsoon uh, impact is still being uh, felt by people and the smallholders, uh, farmers, that the people have uh, taken loan and they could not uh, pay back uh, the loan and and many of the people are in uh, the mental uh, stress and uh, pressure. In addition, he also added that there had not been any support from any uh, agencies, though. He is a ward chairperson of a local government. Uh, he called for the capacity building on these issues and then make sure that these voices from uh, the communities are uh, heard and then taken uh, seriously uh, by uh, our government and especially uh, the international uh, government. And he also uh, highlighted that the stories that uh, shared by uh, Surja D from Calicut are the stories of many people uh, from Pilachi Koilachi, many people from the coastal uh, part of the world. Uh, so he added uh, that there needs to be something substantial uh, done in terms of resources uh, cap and capacity building so that uh, the impact of uh, loss and damage can be addressed and the communities can be uh, built more uh, resilient from uh, this uh, impact. Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Lalan sir uh, for his sharing and uh, his uh, time. And I'd like to now go to uh, our next uh, speaker, uh, Wanon, uh, who is from uh, Climate Watch Thailand. The Gopikas Institute has been working closely uh, with uh, Climate Watch Thailand on uh, Green Climate Fund, Loss and Damage, and then also bringing people's uh, voices from the bottom to different uh, national and uh, international forums. 
Uh, one one will be sharing the stories and suffering from the coastal community in Thailand. So I'd like to request uh, one one to make her say. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you uh, hear me clearly. Um, I do uh, thank you very much for um, having me here. And it's very nice and great to see uh, many of you once again. Um, thank you for the introduction, Avi. And um, what I'm going to present and share with you is uh, maybe from another perspective of uh, the different communities who are living along the coastal areas in Thailand. Uh, but that doesn't really mean that Thailand is not um, eating rice or having rice. So we do share whatever uh, impacts and also the struggles of those farmers on the ground as well. And also that has already been somehow shared as well with Diko Bikas and, and Avi and others as well. But from uh, now I'm sharing um, uh, another thing, meaning that it's not just only the impacts of climate change is not only on the uh, food in terms of rice and, and, and farming, but it also affects the fishing communities uh, and especially those on the ground and women's group. I am sharing my screen now. Um, The screen is okay. Yeah. Um, so I put in my title as beyond adaptation. I think we have been talking for years as well on the adaptation, but of course, even adaptation is not fully implemented, right? Uh, a number of countries do have their NAP and their NAPA, but those are already somehow not uh, fully implemented and not financed. And that's how we get into the loss and damage as well. And this is also the case of the coastal communities in Thailand. Um, what I am also sharing is more in terms of how communities have met, have made their attempts to do adaptation, but then the adaptation has proved to be failed. And that's how they face the loss and damage. And this is the community and also the area that we have done the work over 20 years and is engaging with the local communities in monitoring the changes to the coastal areas and how it has affected um, their livelihoods. I put in the photo here, you see in 2010, the area, the whole area is sea. That is a natural process, even beyond 2010. And it's, it's encroaching into the land because of the sea level rise and also the heat expansion into the ocean. And then what the, in, 2020, in 2011, we together with the communities thought about how to protect the coastal areas as part of the adaptation measures. So they designed to do something and you see, and those are the bamboos, they put the bamboos there. And then five years later, they could create in the same area. So they have created their mangroves area. And then also that mangroves area stayed as of the moment because of the initiative the local and traditional initiative. And now you see in the, um, um, uh, as of now, uh, by August, the area was there with the local initiative uh, being um, implemented. But now we see a difference in terms of more heat and more storms and more waves have been encroaching. Um, this is the area called Samut Sakon province in Thailand which is in the Gulf here. This is the Gulf of Thailand. This is the area where, where, we, are, we, where we have done the studies for over 20 years. And the area, as I said, it was, it was the sea. And also with mangroves and, and, and the mangroves area were uh, destroyed by the sea level rise. And it has, the sea level rise has pushed into the sea, uh, into the land, destroying the mangrove for an area of more than one, square kilometers, meaning that the sea has encroached into the land. So what the com and communities that have been using and also trying um, and making their livelihood depending on the mangroves area because small fish and also um, marine resources um, have been very uh, abundant in the area. You see fish, you see prawns and also Women have also been engaging in um, trying to process those fish 
and uh, bringing more income and sell those uh, fish in the market. And there have been a special type of prawn, the um, king prawn as well, which is available and also quite plenty in this area. And also a very particular thing about this area uh, is that since it's located near to the sea on the coastal area, farmers that are not growing rice, they are, they are making salt farming. So the salt farming is using the sea water. So they get the sea water into that land, just like when you are having a rice plot, but this is salt plot. So, and then they dry it using the solar radiation at each particular time of the year. And then they dry that salt sea water and then they, be, they get the, the salt and they sell it. And these are the livelihood of the we, uh, women and also the communities there um, and in maintaining their livelihoods. And when the mangroves area have, have been decreased, um, decreased because of the sea level rise, they're now thinking about, they were at that time thinking about how to make sure that these livelihoods stay and also how to make sure that the mangroves area um, is not further lost uh, in the future. So um, they are planting and also using different kinds of bamboos in order to put those bamboos into the sea. So the, the this action by the community together, it was it was and it was reclaiming the mangrove area into the sea, and these are the mangrove. Um, sorry, the the bamboos that they have put, um, into into the sea, uh, as an action to uh, reclaim the mangroves into the sea. These bamboos had to be bought from other provinces because they need to use a, a number of bamboos, and when you put the bamboo in there it delays and also slow down the waves from the sea to encroach into the land. And also um, when you look at it, um, this one is a kind of, um, it's not a concrete type of, of, of seawall or uh, not a concrete or very hard infrastructure. It's, it gives a space for the waves to still, to, to still getting through the bamboo and when the waves gets into the bamboo, it brings about some sediments as well. So when they have enough sediments, they grow the seeds, traditional seeds of the mangrove forest. And those seeds have been growing for the last, uh, for the next five years. And this is the same area that after five years that uh, they have put in the seed, into the sea, around the bamboo shoot, uh, around the bamboo fences, so that's how they grow also the different types and species of the uh, mangroves area. So when they when they see uh, this mangrove, then the livelihood started to come back. They get more fish, more marine resources, and their income has also been um, uh, uh, maintained, but still not as not as much as when compared to the previous time. And um. And these are the, the species and also the place where you see that it has been, the, the mangrove area has already been reclaimed into the sea. So different types, and these mangroves are very significant for the marine resources. It has provided shelter and also the habitat, uh, uh, habitat areas for the small marine resources. And when they grow up, communities could also use for their livelihood, for sales and for the uh, community consumption. And, and another type, these are the uh, mangroves area that has been reclaimed into the sea. Um, the 10 years ago, uh, when they started doing this and when they, have the, when they have reclaimed the mangrove into the sea, it was in the uh, distance of 200 meters into the sea. So they are reclaiming the mangrove into the sea for 200 meters. Now, the last five years, we have started the second phase of putting the bamboos into the sea. And this is from the view that you see how you see the bamboos into the sea. Yeah? This is the second phase. So uh, the first phase was done. Now they put in the second phase five years ago. And all those bamboos were there, as you can see. And it was hoped that the result could be the same as it was done 10 years ago. And then now 
what what could be expect was when there was a big storm when there there's a big storms or a big tides or even waves these bamboos could stop or slow down the waves that you that would be passing through those bamboos so but now when you see it you see a smaller waves here like this so those waves as of the moment it has passed through those bamboos which was never happened before so what does it mean by this it means that more heat has been faced and also more expansion of the ocean and also more storms and more severe storms have already occurring for the last five years so even with the bamboo that used to work well during the past five years uh, the past 10 years it's not going to be efficient anymore so that means whatever communities have put there as their adaptation efforts it's not going to be working as of now because of the rising um, greenhouse gas and also the higher temperature increase so you see the small waves here has been passing through those bamboo fence so imagine that if co temperatures continue to rise these bamboos might not be able to slow down those waves we have also noticed some of the bamboos got broken is because of the strong waves so that means if we not if we are not stopping or delaying um the greenhouse gas emissions more waves and more storms and more tides could also and even stronger ones would also get in more into the sea it more encroaching into the land and and these have shown that the um and you have seen some waves as well um so we need for us in Thailand and these communities, we are now demanding that we need to address the loss and damage of which the government in Thailand is not yet starting to address it. And, and uh, we need to also recognize that um, the traditional knowledge that have been uh, implemented on the ground, especially by communities and women's group have some limitation, but we need to recognize that it needs to be based on what have on those uh, traditional knowledge. So that is not being um, alienated to the areas. And we need also in, uh, uh, to build those uh, from the ground and engaging with the people on the ground and those who are the, the key stakeholders who would also benefit from um, the actions and also the um, measures that would also be implemented. Finance and technology, as you can see, a lot of bamboos had to be bought and those would have to be sought out from different provinces. The, the, the past 20 years that we have engaging on this, we are using our own money. Communities are putting their own resources to do the bamboos. So there's no support available for them to, uh, no support for them to continue doing this. But even though that they are still continuing doing it because it's the life and death of um, their livelihood. So the finance is, is urgently needed and it's not going to be some finance to something else but finance to continue on this bamboo shoot based on what is already there on the ground maybe some technologies uh, could also be needed but those technologies would also need to be built from the technical from the traditional knowledge um, that has already been tested on the ground for the last 20 years so we don't need a new and new and rocket science technologies in this area. And I would think that it applies to a, a, a different areas and different countries as well, that those technologies would have to be responded to the local needs and it had to be built upon the um, uh, initiatives uh, already on the ground. And this case have been shown quite clearly that communities are struggling and also the lot their lot their uh, impacts are very very clear and um, the livelihoods have been lost but then they are trying um to stay alive and to survive by doing different measures and in this case uh, using the bamboos it has proved to be working um for some time but as of now it's going to be very less efficient and they are going to severely affect affected by the further impacts of climate change. So we have seen adaptation has some limits because of the rising temperature. 
So we also need to address and demand for the loss and then damage finance from those who have caused the climate impact. And in this case, it's the northern countries and also the big corporations who have also using continue using the fossil fuels. And I think um, we also need to recognize all the work and initiatives that has already been done on the ground because we also need to ensure that the traditional and local knowledge uh, has already be, has been built up uh, in order to continue and also to uh, uh, to be used as an input and basis for further uh, uh, for further uh, uh, adaptation and also further uh, measures in order to survive during the uh, uh, global uh, global warming world. And with that, um, with that, I thank you very much. And this um, initiative and also the work. Um, that has been done for the last 20 years. It has been a collaboration with Climate Watch Thailand and Forest and Farmers Foundation and the T uh, Thai NGO Vakat and also the Alper Gulf of Thailand Conservation Network. All the credits to them. Thank you very much, Alvi, and over to you. Thank you, uh, Wanon, uh, for sharing the stories from the Coastal Committee of Thailand, how in 2011, uh, the work on adaptation uh, was there through using local traditional knowledge, even uh, through uh, the case of Thailand, like the coastal part of Thailand, it's very clear and evident that there is a limit to adaptation and the communities are suffering. And as uh, one would mention that it's about the livelihood, the life and death of the community, and there needs to be addressing a loss and damage, and it needs to be addressed in terms of finances and resources. That resources needs to come from uh, global north and corporations who play a big role in this crisis. And again, these finances should come under the financing mechanism of UNFCCC. So that's a uh, very clear from one and I think that's clear demand from the people and communities from global south who are facing uh, the severe uh, crisis of climate impact and then the loss and damage is uh, getting more uh, worse and uh, worse uh, in uh, recent time. We have seen uh, the incident of uh, landslide and flood in, uh, in the Himalayan uh, belt in, uh, in Sikkim and Himachal uh, Pradesh uh, as well. So, so without uh, further ado, we have uh, received a few questions from the participants. Again, I'd like to thank the participants for uh, being us uh, during uh, this uh, sharing. So I'd like to uh, open the floor uh, to the participants who have been uh, with us for uh, more than an hour uh, with us. So, uh, so I'd like to request uh, you, uh, if you are comfortable, you can uh, use the mic or you can type it in the chat and then please uh, write, uh, like share the question uh, like with which uh, speaker like the question is uh, targeted to or like with, with whom uh, you want to ask like uh, the question. So the, the floor is open for uh, Q&A. Uh, Wanun, uh, So we had uh, we saw sharing from uh, uh, mountain region of uh, Nepal by uh, Gita Ji Kedak. Uh, we had uh, research sharing on loss and damage from uh, Tarai Modes of Nepal from Prayas. Similarly, we had a sharing uh, from coastal part of Thailand uh, from uh, Wanu. So again, uh, I'd like to request if you have any questions or any addition to this, because uh, we have like a diverse range of audience from different parts of the world who have been uh, part of uh, this climate justice fight, and they might uh, have been uh, doing research or engaging with uh, community in building community resiliency, addressing loss and damage. So not only adding uh, to the question, you can uh, asking the question, you can add any of your learning or experience.
uh, I think it's uh, the presentation and the delivery and the stories from the communities uh, that we had today. I think uh, it's very uh, clear uh, that the impact are uh, being felt by the communities and there's like a uh, need of addressing it that might be uh, through preparedness, capacity building of uh, local government, engaging of our own uh, national government, collaboration uh, between uh, different uh, community organizations who are working closely uh, with the community. So I think there might not be uh, any uh, questions uh, as our speakers, uh, both in, in presentation and sharing have uh, made it uh, clear, but I see a hand uh, raised from Wanun, so I'd like to uh, request uh, Wanun. If I could, and I maybe perhaps hear from, from colleagues here as well. I think we, when we were together in Thailand for the visit of the GCF, we were talking about the finance, right? Cl climate finance. And also we are demanding the climate finance from the global north. And then what we have is we have finance in the green climate fund. Now let's talk about the loss and damage fund. Um, the, for the Green Climate Fund, that is already financed. I'm not talking that it's depleting. Yeah? But then now the finance has already come into our country. So how are we making sure that communities who are at the forefront of climate impacts and those vulnerable communities have direct access um, to those finance that has already been in our country. And if you could also put something about, not just only in terms of the scale of the finance for the loss and damage fund, we might be able to demand as well, how community or how the finance can be channeled to those directly vulnerable or the most vulnerable to impacts of climate change. What I am saying is we might need to stress um, these as well as our demand, um, not just only on the scale of the finance, but in terms of the channeling of the finance to those communities on the ground. So that is not going to be repeated what the GCF has been um, uh, has been done uh, for the last 10 years. Um, thank you, Abby. Thank uh, you. Uh, one uh, for... Uh clarifying and stressing that uh, the resources might be there, but we have to make sure that uh, these resources are uh, deployed to the community, those who are in need. Uh, we had uh, sharing uh, from Talcot, we had sharing from Saptari, so, so this kind of communities across the Global South uh, needs to make sure that they have that uh, access. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think there is no uh, any question. So, uh, uh, so if there is uh, any additional from any of our uh, speakers, so I'd like to request them. Again, I'd like to thank uh, ICAD for this uh, amazing opportunity uh, for organizing this kind of platform where uh, we could uh, share uh, the work, the challenges, the stories uh, from the committee. I'd also like to thank uh, Jitaji, uh, Kejak team, uh, Climate Watch Thailand, Digo Vikas, uh, Mission East, uh, Loss and Damage uh, Youth uh, Coalition, who had been uh, part of uh, the work uh, this, this amazing organization uh, had been doing. I, I'd also like to take this opportunity to say that uh, Digo Vikas uh, Institute, TDAC, and, uh, and LDC uh, Watch uh, is having a side event on loss and damage in uh, Dubai itself at COP28 on uh, December 6th. Uh, so I'd like to share this information, but later uh, we'll share it as well so that if you are joining in person, uh, you can join us, but we'll also have a virtual uh, platform where you can get connected uh, with us. So I'd like to now, so I think there's a hand raise from uh, Praya, so, uh, so it's now up to Praya. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Hicks. I, I was just uh, trying to uh, respond to the question uh, raised by Lisa in the chat box, uh, which was the, the lowland communities are severely impacted by frequently occurring climate induced disasters. And what are the measures that are being applied there and what could be? So, um, till now, uh, the communities uh, in the lowland uh, areas uh, are facing uh, various uh, 
untimely climate incidents uh, which they have to uh, cope up with and they are applying various uh, adaptation practices like raised uh, household beds, raised beds for the agricultural productions, um, deepening the, uh, the drainage facilities in their areas. Uh, but uh, the major gaps and issues are, are like uh, technical issues uh, in agriculture and financial issues, financial mechanisms that are not uh, properly uh, acquainted uh, to uh, reach to the lower communities who are not uh, because of which they are not being able to receive that relief funds as well. And uh, what could be done uh, with the communities uh, like um, assisting them with technical supports, um, the prior informations, uh, accurate prior information about the uh, untimely climate incidents or extreme climate incidents as well. Uh, uh, and, and the financial support uh, as well to them to restore their uh, destroyed land areas to uh, rejuvenate themselves uh, from the ground uh, and relief support as well. So I was just uh, uh, trying to uh, respond to the questions uh, from Lisa. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Priya. Uh, for responding uh, to the question from uh, Lisa, as Kitaji also has uh, mentioned in the chat that uh, we'd like to have a group photo uh, for our beautiful memories of uh, this uh, session. So uh, I'd like to request everyone to open their uh, camera if that's uh, possible and you are comfortable. So that's not an, a mandatory, uh, so that uh, some of our team member can take a screen uh, sort of this. And I think we have a question from uh, Pratap Ji as well. So after this uh, group, uh, group photo, we can, uh, uh, from anyone from the speaker panel can uh, address this. Yeah, I think the one uh, have been shared about the adaptation, uh, limits to adaptation as well and the loss and damage work in the coastal uh, part of uh, Thailand. So I'd like to request uh, Wanun uh, to answer Pratas uh, the uh, question. Um, thank you very much. I think this is a good question. And just to sh just to share the background, a bit of the background, um, as you know, it's it's been the work for the last 20 years, but still continuing. So it's something that we are based on. We use uh, this basis for our input to the discussion on the loss and damage. So from this case of Samutsakon province on the coastal erosion and also the, the loss of the mangrove and the bamboo lines, um, we compare it to the last 10 years when we firstly installed the um, the bamboo lines, it worked. Yeah. So some statistics and the community social and economic survey show an increase in the incomes and also the livelihoods of the local communities. But then when we started to do the second lines, the second sets of the bamboo, so it shows a different one. So we have we have noticed we have more, more smaller waves getting into, getting through the bamboos and bamboos got broken and the expenditure needs to be uh, more in, in order to fix the bamboos. So to answer, to, to, to contribute to the answer on this, how we see that it is a limit to the adaptation. I think we compare to the existing tested measures on adaptation that used to work and also um, we are looking as well at the resources and the attempts and efforts of those communities who have put there for the second set of the bamboo, which has somehow now proved that those bamboo lies might not be working as effectively as it used to be for the last 10 years. And, um, and I think we also need to, to monitor it um, uh, Con regularly so that um, we see some differences or changes from the pattern that it has already been there for the last 10 years. 
I think we are in the position now um, to contribute somehow, but it's not really a final, final stage um, to come up with a solid and concrete uh, uh, measures, how you define the limitation to adaptations and how you start to know that adaptation is not working. But this is the case that we are based on. And it was good in a sense that we had started it because for the last 20 years. So it could also provide some inputs for further discussion in terms of the limits to the adaptation. Um, I, I hope what I am, I'm trying to respond might not be a very concrete one, but it is a working progress um, from the work on the ground. And I hope that somehow contributes to the response. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Wanun, for responding that. Uh, sorry, uh, Fatin, uh, we just went over time as there is uh, another session uh, happening. Uh, so we'd like to again uh, thank all the participants, uh, speaker on behalf of uh, Digitika Institute, Digitika Climate Work uh, Thailand, and all the organizations associated uh, with this session. And special uh, thanks to Fatin and uh, iPad for uh, providing this amazing platform. We'll have a short summary report published uh, in the website of CIDAC, uh, Digitika Institute, and other organizations. So you can have that summary and share with a uh, wider uh, network and hopefully uh, wherever you are working, we can strengthen uh, and uh, bring more strong uh, voices on uh, climate justice in uh, the and Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everyone.